As we mentioned, the Lloydminster Vandals sit atop the standings with just one week left in the Alberta Football League season. The team has stormed out to five straight victories, but standing in their way of home field advantage is next week's opponent, the Grand Prairie Drillers. Emma Murphy has the story. The Green and Black have been an absolute force this year. Through five games, the team has averaged 44 points four and shut out teams three times. But they still see room for improvement. Have a faster start. We, we, we left some points on the field here today, like in the beginning, but uh, if, we, if we could start off fast like we know we can, then I think we'll be all right. The team seems to be getting better with each game. Last week, the Vandals beat last year's champs and the previously undefeated Calgary Wolfpack. This week, they scored the most lopsided victory in the league this season, a 76-0 demolition of the Edmonton Army. A, a good win, a good win. Um, it's something that we want to build on as each game goes on and I think we got the momentum going and we're just going to keep on riding it. You know, it's great to have a win like this. I mean, all of our backups get into play and they get lots of reps and stuff, but you know, it, it's a good momentum booster. Everybody gets happy and stuff, but it's also, it can be a bad thing too because you're riding high and you think, oh, we're going to roll over the next team, but hard work, we get a good practice in, we should be fine for next week's game. So. The next team they'll face is the Grand Prairie Drillers, one of only two teams to have beat the Vandals last year. The Vandals have added a new dimension to their game that they feel will give them the edge. Uh, we just got to keep our run game going. I mean, we've had a, we haven't had a run game yet, and this is this is our year. We got two stellar running backs, and we got a, one of the best offense lines in the league. And we just got to keep rolling. I mean, if we keep doing playing our game and not stooping to their level and playing their game, we're gonna we're gonna win. We're gonna come out on top. Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, I think we're probably the best running back crew in the in the league right now. Um, we, we we feed off of each other. We're always encouraging each other. We push each other. So we only make each other better, right? So, and that's exactly what we're about. Like, there's no animosity between us. It's just friendly competition, and we love it. We love it. The two teams meet at Armstrong Field next Saturday at 6 p.m. If the Vandals win, they'll finish atop the league with home field advantage. Emmett Murphy, Newcap Sports. The well, Minnesota Reapers rugby team was looking for back-to-back -back wins on Saturday as they had home field advantage against the Saskatoon Wild Oats second team. Both teams forced to play with short benches for the Reapers. That meant a lot of rookies got the nod to start. For the Oats, that meant players from their top team came down to fill the roster. The skill led them to an advantage at halftime, but the Reapers battled back. They pulled even with the second-tier team, and it stayed that way for the finish in a 25-25 draw. Veteran Joel Bolton was impressed with the effort of his inexperienced team. Well, to be honest, we came out with a shorter side. We only had two reserves, and most of the guys, actually there's about six guys out there. This is their first year, and some of them their first game. So we really battled hard and played against a very good side and everything, so we did well. We've had some of the best scrums we ever had and some of the lineups we ever had, just, just from good communication and nobody really trying to play on their own. The Reapers are at home next week against the Saskatoon Krems, a game they expect to and need to win. The Calgary Stampede wrapped up last night with the GMC Rangeland Derby's dash for cash. $100,000 was up for grabs as the final race went down to the wire. Jason Glass would cross the line first, but would suffer two seconds in penalties. That brought his total time to 122.9, meaning Troy Dorchester claims the $100,000 with a time of 118.40, one one-hundredths of a second faster than Doug Irvine, with Gary Gorse finishing in third with a time of 119.68. Well, I Minister Beck Cave under 16 Rebels were looking good at the fast pitch Provincials in Stony Plain. On Saturday, they won their first three games by a combined score of 42 to 10. The Rebels continue their domination of the top clubs in the province, beating the Edmonton Warriors 10 to 3. That was the Rebels' third mercy in four games as they advanced the semifinals on Sunday. However, the girls were scheduled to face the girls were scheduled to face the River City Hornets, but the wet weather forced the cancellation of all playoff games. The do or die games have been rescheduled for July 21st. The second season of the NSRBL starts tomorrow night when the Lloydminster Juniors take on the Unity Cardinals, but all eyes will be on the Lloydminster Twins as they look for their fourth NSRBL title in a row. The Twins begin their best of three series on Wednesday against the Kindersley Raiders. These teams hooked up once in the season with the Twins walking away with a 5-3 win. The Border City Blue Jays will be in tough taking on a Meadow Lake Sox team that has won 10 games in a row to end the season. 
as this best of three series starts on Wednesday as well. As I mentioned earlier, the surprising juniors open their series on Tuesday against the Cardinals. The juniors beat Unity back in June 13 to three and ended their season winning six of their last seven games. And finally, the North Battleford Beavers and Wilkie Brewers open their season on Wednesday. Both teams split their season series with the Beavers taking the most recent meeting 5-3 in early July.